Hello everybody and welcome to How to Write Like Ernest Hemingway. I am Daniel Andrews. This is part two. We're going to be talking about Hemingway's cumulative sentence structures. Whew! Doesn't that just like get you fired up? That turns me on. Cumulative sentence structures. That just that just sounds so exciting to me. <laughs> um, in part one, we talked about Hemingway's parataxis, so feel free to check out that video if you missed that. But what cumulative sentence structures are real basically, we're going to define it kind of in a second, but when people encounter uh, a cumulative sentence structure, a lot of times it's mistaken for a run-on sentence, especially by people that aren't very familiar with like prose writing and fiction and like creative writing in general. Um, and sometimes they're right. Sometimes it's like just a bad, clunky, run-on sentence, and that's the way it kind of reads, and th they're kind of right. But other times they're reading something that's like incredibly well written, and they just don't know enough to recognize actually like what techniques being used and like why why cumulative sentence structures can be incredibly useful as a tool. And that's where we're going to dig into. First, though, we need to define what a cumulative sentence structure is, sometimes called loose sentences or loose sentence structure. Basically, it can take a lot of forms in what's included in a cumulative sentence structure, because you could, in theory, have like a cumulative, periodic, branching sentence structure. Not that you necessarily should know what all that is, or we'll get into that again someday. But 70% of the time, and there are great exceptions to this, but usually you're referring to the addition of free modifiers to a sentence, uh, and, or to a main main clause or an independent clause. So what does that mean though? Basically free modifiers just add details to sentences and they come at the end of a sentence. But to make it a free modifier, it can refer to either the beginning of the sentence or the middle of it. That's pretty simple. Like if, if you think about it, it's going to make more sense once we actually dig in, you can actually see some examples of it, but it's just adding details to a sentence at the end of a sentence and it can refer to either the beginning or middle. This adds a rhythm that you're going to see. Uh, it's really good for describing action. That's where Hemingway uses it, like, really well, is when there's, uh, when there's like, a lot of things happening very quickly at once or you're trying to describe, like, very rapid action. It is, like, probably the best way to do that. So hold on. Let's jump in here and show you guys what I mean. So let's jump in here. First, we're just going to read this paragraph, and then we'll break it down. <clears throat> McComber stepped out of the curved opening at the side of the foot of the seat, onto the step and down onto the ground. The lion still stood, looking majestically and coolly toward this object that his eyes only showed in silhouette, bulking like some super rhino. There was no man smell carried toward him, and he watched the object, moving his great head a little from side to side. Then watching the object, not afraid, but hesitating before going down the, to the bank to drink with such a thing opposite from him, he saw a man figure detach itself from it, and he turned his heavy head and swung away toward the cover of the trees as he heard a crackling crash and felt the slam of a thirty odd six two twenty grain solid bullet that bit his flank and ripped in sudden, hot, scalding nausea through his stomach. He trotted, heavy, big-footed, swinging wounded, full-bellied, through the trees toward the tall grass and cover, and the crash came again to go past him, ripping the air apart. Then it crashed again, and he felt the blow as it hit his lower ribs, and he ripped on through blood sudden hot and frothy in his mouth and he galloped toward the high grass where he could crouch and not be seen and make them bring the crashing thing close enough so he can make a rush and get the man that held it Whew. so the first thing you might notice as i read that was you're like running out of breath as you read it like that which is the which is like the effect it's supposed to have uh, that's what it does it adds like a, it's almost like a rapping like if you are a fan of hip-hop it's like a rapping where it's non-stop and you have to read it very quickly like that with the with the quick pauses because so like take a look at this he trotted heavy big footed swinging wounded full bellied through the trees toward the tall grass and cover and the crash came again to go past him ripping the air apart like there's a there's no it's such a it's such a quick movement that you have to say it all in one breath almost and because otherwise you're not really like you're not really reading it with uh with kind of the expediency that it's asking for and all of a sudden, the coolest thing about cumulative sentence structures is that it adds excitement to what you're reading. It's like, it's kind of like a suspense or like a thriller thing, like when they've got like the music in the background, like, ee, 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 like in Jaws, that sort of thing. It adds that, oh, where it's all up in your chest and it's like an anxiety sort of thing. So we're going to break this down line by line now here. Um, I'm just focusing on the cumulative aspect of this because honestly, as an author or writer, I don't think it matters to get into the grammatical nitty-gritty of like complex compound sentence structures Hemingway wasn't thinking about any of that as he wrote it he was simply trying to give you the action paint a picture and make you feel it and he did that through simply knowing that using like a cumulative effect would make you like the way I read that it would make you read it in that manner so I'm not going to focus on any of the like little like English teacher nit tutor nitty-gritty like this is complex this is compound I just want to show you the building effect that this has McComber stepped out of the curved opening at the side of the front of the seat and onto the step and down onto the ground. 
Notice that has like a building effect already, although that certainly isn't the meat of this cumulative structure. The lion still stood looking majestically and coolly toward this object that his eyes only showed in silhouette, bulking like some super rhino. Again, building. And he's got these like, he's again, building compound. It's like all, it's all description and then bulking like some super rhino. What was bulking like some super rhino? This object that showed in the silhouette. Okay. There was no man smell carried toward him, and he watched the object, moving his great head a little from side to side. Again, he's kind of like, he's kind of like pacing himself, because all of a sudden it's like shit's about to go, it's about to hit the fan. Then, watching the object, not afraid, but hesitating before going down to the bank to drink with such a thing opposite from him, he saw a man figure detach itself from it, and he turned his heavy head and swung away toward the cover of the trees as he heard a crackling crash and felt the slam of a 30 aught 6 220-grain solid bullet that bit his flank and ripped in sudden hot, scalding nausea through his stomach. That's it. That was the payoff. <laughs> so that, he was pacing himself, and there it is. It just happened, the thing that he was waiting for. Now, think just... Then watching the object, so this is the object he referred to previous, prior, obviously. Now he's describing the feelings of the, the lion. This is like kind of, this is almost a perspective shift or like a narration shift. Uh, it's still, it's still third person, but notice how he's concerned with a different character's uh, perspective and their, its, uh, its experience. So then watching the object, not afraid, but hesitating before going down to the bank to drink with such a thing opposite from him. So this lion sees a silhouette of this odd object that looks like a super rhino. He's worried that there might be a hunter or a man, because lions that have been hunted like wouldn't know that, right? And he's worried about that, but he doesn't see the man, so he's, think he's not afraid. He's going to go out and drink anyway, even though he's kind of cautious of this weird object across this bank from him. <laughs> then, though, he saw a man figure detach itself from it, from the super rhino silhouette object, and he turned his heavy head and swung away toward the cover of the trees as he heard a crackling crash and felt the slam of a 30 aught 6 220 grain solid bullet that bit his flank and ripped in sudden hot scalding nausea through his stomach. So all of a sudden he sees, you notice, the lion sees the man figure that he was looking for and that he's scared of detach itself from the super rhino thing and turned his head and swung away, here's the cumulative effect. Saw a man detached himself from it, and he turned his he heavy head, and swung away toward the cover of the trees as he heard a crackling fresh, and felt the slam of a 30 aught 6 220 grain solid bullet that bit his flank and ripped into sudden hot scalding nausea. A lot of this, and can usually be replaced with a comma. If um, he saw a man figure to detach himself from it, comma, right? He turned his, he his heavy head, you can still get away with this, honestly. He turned his heavy head, swung away toward the cover of the trees as he heard a crackling crash. I would leave Anne there. You could, you, if you wanted to be a, you could, you could replace that with a comma, but it would, it would, it would change the rhythm of what you're reading. But this is still works. He turned his heavy head, swung away toward the cover of the trees as he heard a crackling crash and felt the slam of a 30-06 grain solid bullet that bit his flank. And you could put a comma here too. Ripped in sudden hot scalding nausea through his stomach. That's a cumul that's that's by definition a cumulative sense structure. Notice that he just substituted the and the word and for the comma because he wanted it to read a different way. Both of those are effective, but I think what he did was better. And it, there's a reason he chose to use and instead of the commas there because you'll notice in other in other parts he uses the commas to set off the free modifiers. He trotted again. So he trotted. How did he trot? Heavy, big footed. Okay, describing the trotted. So these are modifying the way he trotted. Right. Adding, going back to our definition, adding details to the sentence. He trotted heavy and big footed. Okay, cool. We know how he's trotting. What did he do? So, and then he tr he's trotting, he's swing, swinging wounded, full bellied. You can picture this lion having been shot, swinging its belly. You know how like, uh, like animals like that, like wild animals, like, like lions, predators have that belly that kind of hangs down full bellied through the trees toward the tall grass and cover. And the crash came again to go past him, ripping the air apart. So again, this is most of this is all describing the manner in which he trotted. So how did he trot? Heavy and big-footed. Where was he going? Through the trees toward the tall grass and cover. And now he's adding some action to it. And the crash came again to go past him, ripping the air apart. So rather than uh, finishing here, I want to kind of jump into another example that demonstrates even more purely with the, with the comma setting off the free modifiers and the cumulative sense structure. Uh, it's another, this is the same story. To give you a little bit of context, they, uh, he's describing Wilson, the safari guide, and his wife that are also with him. They were behind him and McComber was filling his rifle. Okay, dropping shells onto the ground. So he's filling his rifle, so he's rushing. It sounds like he's rushing because he's dropping his shells onto the ground, jamming it, and then clearing the jam. Oop. Clearing the jam, and then they were almost up with the bull when Wilson yelled, stop. 
and the car skidded so that it almost swung over and McComber fell forward onto his feet, slammed his bolt forward, and fired as far forward as he could aim into the galloping, rounded black back, aimed and shot again, then again, then again, and the bullets, all of them hitting, had no effect on the buffalo that he could see. So all of this, again, is adding detail. He's filling his rifle, so he's drop and he's dropping the shells onto the ground, jamming it, so he's rushing. They're hurrying to try and get after these buffalo before they get away and they can't, they're out of range to shoot at clearing the jam then they were almost up with the bull so they're in the car and they're chasing after these buffalo in the car when wilson yells stop the safari guide and the car skidded so that it almost swung over so the car almost tipped over they stopped so quickly and mccomber fell forward onto his feet i think he means by this i'd have to read the story exactly i think he means that mccomber like fell out of the car forward onto his feet like it's sliding and he kind of like jumped out of it like falling falling forward onto his feet or it could mean that he was in the car and he somehow fell onto forward onto his feet it's not exactly clear here but he slammed his bolt forward and fired as far forward as he could aim into the galloping. So he's so he's shooting into these galloping buffalo. Again, adding detail to the shooting of the buffalo. Rounded black back. So you can imagine him aiming down the sights at this, the black backs of these buffaloes. Aimed and shot again. And then again. And then again. So he shot, what, four times in this little passage? Aimed and shot again. So twice. Then again and again. So like four times he shot. And the bullets. Now, again, still describing this act of shooting at these black backs and the galloping. And the bullets, all of them hitting, had no effect on the buffalo that he could see. Again, mostly all set off with commas here. Uh, had no effect. Aimed. Rounded like Again, all modifying the shooting at the the shooting at the buffalo. Adding detail. Notice when Hemingway does this that it's always to add detail to these action sequences. Not that he doesn't ever use cumulative sense structures for like slower, less action-packed parts, but when it when that that device shines the most when you're describing very quick action like this that's almost like what it was made for, excuse me what it was made for um i think that's one big mistake that uh like average writers make is they see someone like hemingway do this and they're like oh this is a really good technique and it is but they choose the wrong places to use it they'll use it when they're describing some like middle-aged woman picking out a dress and like drinking coffee or something and it's like it, it like just doesn't make sense like there's probably a different way to go about that unless they were trying to add some sort of gravity or urgency or like some sort of aspect that this bring this technique brings to the passage. Um, so I think it's really easy to just kind of have this blanket, like, oh, cumulative sense structures are really good. Hemingway uses them. When it's like, yes, but he chooses where to where to really implement them. And that's really the strength of him, is that there's so much contrast in his style. And I'm going to talk about this more later. But since he used short declarative sentences, and then he created these really long cumulative sentence structures... It created this really good contrast because when it's things are slow and kind of simple, he's using these short declarative sentences, and then when things get complex, speedy, and action-packed, he switches to this cumulative style, and all of a sudden it adds this tremendous amount of speed and like passion to the reading of it, and that contrast is really, really, really smart. So it's kind of this balancing act that he used to do. So thank you guys. Hope you guys got something out of this example. If you liked the video, please like and subscribe or share this with any of your writing friends or any fans of Hemingway, and I'll see you guys next time in part three. Peace.